Welcome to the second video in our Turnergy IG10 series. In this video we're going to quickly show you the main features when you're setting the radio up for something like a quadcopter. Now the quadcopter is the simplest of all the models to set up on a radio like this. When you have things like a helicopter you have different flight modes and if you have something like a plane you have lots of different mixes that are available here as standard. With a quadcopter it's pretty basic. So we'll go through this and show you how to set it up. There's only a couple of things that you really need to be aware of. First of all is that you can actually select the model that you're after. You can choose um, a, a spare model. Uh, so we'll set it up on turn G6. We'll set the model type to be a multicopter and we'll also give it a name. So what we'll do is we'll get rid of the one that's there. Let's give it a name we'll remember. Something like quad. There we go. Okay. So we'll come out of there. And we only have these settings for a quadcopter on this model. Now this is using version 1.3 of the firmware. This is how it was supplied to me in January 2016. So we have channel reverses, so we can decide whether or not each of the channels and settings is reversed on here. Some flight controllers on a quadcopter will let you do this in software. This also allows us to do it here. Then we have the auxiliary channels that you can set up. These are channels that you can assign any control to, and we have three of them available, channels 5, 9, and 10. We have something called Attitude and IOC and gimbal. Now those are predefined channels with controls that have been set up uh, as part of the firmware. So this is the stuff that Turnergy think you're going to be using the most and we'll look at that in a sec. We have logic switches that allow you to kind of um, have a logic switch come on. So if you have two switches come on together then that can be read as a third switch and you can test the uh, whether or not that third switch is on. We have timers, obviously, display servos. So here we can actually see all the controls moving. So there's the main four flight controls at the top. And then it's set up IOC, Attitude, and Gimbal. And you can see those three there. Now those were the three that were actually here, Attitude, IOC, and Gimbal. And what the radio's done is that it's actually set up default controls. So the default control for Gimbal is VRA, which is the left hand rotating knob. There it is, it's moving around. Um, IOC is on SWC by default, switch C in the top left hand corner, it's a two position switch. And attitude actually doesn't do anything yet, you have to set that up. And then here's your other auxiliary channels that we looked at, five, nine, and 10. And there they are in auxiliary channels, five, nine, and 10. Then we have the models that you can go through, receiver setup and the system settings. So in here, we only have a couple of things we can play with. We can either set up the um, auxiliary channels to change things or the attitude. Now we've already seen that IOC and gimbal already have a control associated with them and that's fixed. So auxiliary channels we can actually set up. So if we wanted channel five to be something like, um, Let's call it, maybe we had LEDs on the craft. We'll call it LED. We'll pick the control that we want it on. We might want it on the switch at the top right hand corner. There we go. So now when I flick that switch in the top right hand corner, watch channel five, which is now called LED. There, that's moving. So that will allow us to then, if we connect our LED controls into channel five on the receiver, that will work. So let's just talk about how you're connecting up the receiver. So obviously you'll plug your aileron control from your flight controller into channel one, your elevator into channel two, channel three will be for the throttle connection, channel four will be for rudder, channel five would be for LED at the moment. Then you've got channel six for IOC, which is the switch at the top left hand corner. Then you have attitude, gimbal and the others as well. So let's look at what else we can do. Now attitude, this is one where you can actually set up a, a preset number of um, pulses. So if you have a flight controller where you need three or four positions, this is what you can use. I would only use this personally if you wanted four flight modes because this allows you to mix a couple of switches together to get them. Now you can actually pick each of these flight modes. You can't change the name unfortunately, but you can change the value by moving this slider at the bottom. You see it changing up there of what it's going to send to the flight controller. 
But what we can do is we can actually pick two switches here. So we'll pick switch B and we'll also pick switch, which one's that one over there? Switch E. There we go. So now as we move those two switches, it will actually select those. So let me show you what that's doing. So if we go into display servos again, there's attitude. As I move those switches in combination, I can get four positions. It can be all down, half up, oops, hot, and then full up. And what that's doing, those are the four values in attitude that we've set here. So those are those ones, 1000 microseconds, 1330, 16, 60 and 2000. Um, that's useful if you want four modes, but a bit confusing. The way I would do this is go into auxiliary channels. I'd actually call this, if I just wanted three flight modes, I'd just call this something like modes. Pick a three position switch like uh, that one there, which is switch A. There we go. And now if I display servos, as I flick switch A, I get either all over to the left, the middle position, or all to the right. And that then means, in the flight controller, I'd plug aileron into channel 1, elevator to channel 2, throttle to channel 3, rudder to channel 4, and my mode selection into channel 5, and I'd use that single three position switch. The other thing you can do, of course, is then you can assign things like gimbals. So uh, I know we have one gimbal set up by default, which is on that rotating switch up in the middle of the screen. But we have these ones on the shoulders. So for those, we could then set up your other auxiliaries. So we could have this as, um, call it something like, gimbal, we can then pick VRD, which is the variable knob on the left hand side. And now as I move that control, that's the one that's a bit stickier than the rotator once on the shoulder panel, then that's moving as well. So that means that you could plug in the gimbal into channel eight or channel nine. And if you wanted, if it was three axis gimbal, then again, we could do one last thing. give it a control, give it the one on the other side. Now if we go and display servos, I can control both of those by moving the controls on each shoulder. So now all you need to do to control the thing on the craft is plug in the corresponding control from the gimbal or whatever it was into either channels um, eight, nine or 10, and then you've got those controls that would make it work. So that's all there is on this. We don't have anything like the sub trim. We don't have endpoint adjustment. We don't have any of that stuff in here, which is a little bit disappointing because that stuff could occasionally come in handy. But that's how you set your model up and you assign switches and make sure that you've got things like mode set for your multicopter. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.